What's going on everybody? It's Alex here from Alex Physio. So today we're going to be going over crutches. Specifically, we're looking at crutch fitting, walking with a crutch, whether you can put weight or not on the leg, and going up and down the stairs with one crutch and with two crutches. But before we do that, Please hit the like button, subscribe, uh, and hit the bell notification for future videos. It really helps my channel grow and it helps me reach more, uh, more viewers. So when we're fitting for crutches, we want to make sure that the height is appropriate for us. And there's two key landmarks that we look at for a crutch fitting. The first is if you stand with your arms at your side, the crutch handles should be at your wrist crease. Okay, so if I'm standing up tall, it should be right at my wrist crease, which is where it is at right now. The other thing we want to look at is there should be two to three finger widths from the top of the crutch to your armpit. So you can put the crutch right underneath your armpit and measure two to three finger widths, which is where it's at right now as well. So these crutches fit me perfectly as I've done this beforehand. So the other thing that you want to be mindful of when you're walking is you want to make sure you know what your restrictions are. So a lot of times either you're able to put weight on the leg or you're not able to put weight on the leg. So if I can't put weight through the leg, then it's usually easier if the leg is out in front of me. I'm bringing the crutches in front. I'm creating a bit of a tunnel so they're not too narrow, but they're also not too wide out because you want to be able to push down into the crutch and really generate some of that leverage. So I'm bringing the crutches in front of me. I'm leaning over the crutch. And I'm just taking a little hop. You want to make sure when you're taking your hop that you're not going too far forward as then the crutches are behind you and it gets a little bit awkward. And another thing you want to be mindful of is you want to make sure that you're not just resting on your crutches because there is a nerve there. It's called your radial nerve that can just sometimes get irritated, especially if you do this for prolonged periods of time. So you're really pushing down through your wrists and using your forearms to use the crutches when you're ambulating. Okay, so crutch forward, lean over the crutch and just a little step forward. Crutch forward and step forward. The next thing we're going to look at is as if you're able to put weight through the leg. So there's a couple of different patterns or ways to go about it, just depending on how much pain you're in, how mobile you are, how the leg is feeling. Uh, but one of the ways is there's a step two pattern and a step through pattern. So what that looks like is if my right leg is my injured leg, I'm going to bring the crutches forward. I'm going to bring my right leg forward first. And then when I'm stepping with my left, I want to make sure that I'm offloading that sore leg and bringing that other leg to meet up with it. So it's really important that you're pushing down into the crutch in that moment when you're transitioning from your foot being back, or your good foot being back to that good foot coming forward because that helps with pain control and it helps to take some of the pressure off of the leg, at least early on. The other pattern is as you get more comfortable with the crutches is just you bring the crutches forward, you bring the sore leg forward, and then you bring your good leg to go past the sore leg. So that's just when you're a little bit more mobile and you can go a little bit faster with the, with the walking. The other thing, as you're progressing past the two crutches and you're going from two crutches to one crutch, you always, you always wanna make sure that the crutch or the cane or whatever single aid that you use is on the opposite leg of the leg that's injured. Okay, so if you can put weight on the leg, you want to put on the opposite leg and that's going to help with taking more pressure actually off of that side and putting it more towards the non-injured side of your body. A lot of times you'll see people, if they're using a cane or a crutch, they'll put it on the same side thinking that that's going to actually help, but that's actually the opposite. Always on the opposite leg. The other thing to be mindful of, if you're using one aid, you want to bring the aid forward at the same time that you're stepping down. Because if you're stepping first and then taking a step, then you're not really using the purpose of the aid, which is meant to take off pressure through the leg. So you wanna make sure that you're timing it. So this is where you get into a lot of rhythm and getting into that right pattern. As I step with my sore leg, so in this case my right, I'm putting the crutch down at the exact same time. And I can either do that step together pattern for slower walking, or I can do that step through pattern. So when I step here, this leg comes past, and again, I'm touching the crutch at the same time that the leg comes down. Another thing to be mindful of is if you're getting crutches that are in the 
closet and you they haven't been used in a while, you always want to make sure to check on the condition of the crutches. And a couple things you want to look at. You want to look at the top of the crutch to make sure there's sufficient padding. So clearly in this example, there isn't sufficient padding, but it would be good to put something just on the top of here because as you're using crutches for a longer period of time, your armpits can still get a little bit sore if you don't have that cushioning. So some people will put some sort of softer material on there just to help make it feel a bit more comfortable and tie it up or put tape over. Then the other thing you want to look at is you want to look at the grippies on the bottom of the crutch. So this is super important because if you're walking on surfaces where it's not, where it's maybe a little bit slippery or not too comfortable, um, and there's a risk for falls, you always want to make sure that you got a good grip here. And part three of crutches is we're going to practice going up and down the stairs, both putting weight and not putting weight through the leg. So we're going to practice it first with two crutches, as if I wasn't able to put weight on the leg. So usually it's easier if my, if my sore leg is behind me so that it doesn't clip the step as I'm taking a step up. So I'm leaning into the crutches, pushing down with my arms and just to hop up and crutches come up last. So I'm leaning into the crutch, up, crutches come up last, okay? When I'm going down, the order is opposite. So now my sore leg is actually out in front of me so I can see it. Helps just with a little bit more balance. You're gonna bring the crutches down first. You're gonna lean forward slightly and you're gonna step down and then step down. If you can put weight on the leg, then it's a little bit easier. And again, I'm using two crutches as if you weren't to have a rail as well. Obviously, if there's a rail there, it's easier just to have one crutch and one rail. But the other thing would be who's going to bring the, the crutch up for you if you're going up the stairs. But if you weren't to have a rail and you can put weight on the leg, we always teach when you go up the stairs, it's a good leg leads going up to heaven, sore leg leads going down to hell. Okay, so what that looks like is you're going to bring your strong leg up first. So I'm pushing down on the crutch and then I'm bringing the sore leg or the surgical leg or the injured leg to meet up with it. And then crutches come up last. So strong leg, push down on the strong leg, good le or sore leg, crutches up last. When you're going down the stairs, the pattern is opposite. So now it's actually the crutches that are going to come down first. And then it's my sore leg or surgical leg, pushing down on the crutches to take the weight off of the leg, then the good leg. Crutches sore leg, good leg. A lot of people wonder, why is this the specific pattern? Well, if you think about it, when I'm going up the stairs, I want to be able to push off that leg that is the healthy leg. So I want most of the weight to be on the strong leg to help me push up. Because you'll know right away if you're not doing it wrong because you'll have a lot more pain. When you go down the stairs, you want to go down with the sore leg because if I go down with my sore leg, then look, I'm basically doing like a quarter single leg squat on that good leg. So if you're trying to go down with your good leg, this is going to be really painful here. So that's with two crutches. With one crutch, it's a little bit easier. You'd have one crutch and one rail, but it would be the same pattern. So if I can put weight on the leg, then I'm going strong leg leading up first, push down into the rail and into the crutch. Crutch comes last, strong leg, sore leg, crutch last. When I go down the stairs, same thing. But again, the railing is a little bit easier because it's usually gonna be a little bit more sturdy than the crutches. And because it's fixed, it's easier to maneuver, especially for individuals who are a little bit more elderly and a little bit weaker because crutches do demand quite a bit of energy uh, expenditure. So crutches down first, sore leg, good leg. Crutches, sore leg, good leg. If you wanted to bring both crutches up the stairs, you could actually stack the crutches right on top of each other. And if you do have one rail and two crutches, you would just push down through both crutches at the same time. It's a little bit awkward at first to get used to, but nonetheless, the pattern is... The last thing we're gonna look at is how to stand up and sit down onto a chair if you can't put any weight on the leg. So you wanna stack the crutches right beside each other and you're gonna grab the inside of the, of the handle of the crutch. The other hand would ideally push off an armrest if you had it, but in this case I don't. So I'm pushing down into the crutch, I'm standing up, and then I'm transferring the crutch underneath each armpit. Again, this is assuming that your balance is okay, that you have enough time and able to stand on one leg while you're transitioning over. But 
Basically, once you stand, you just continue on with your walking. And to sit, it's the same thing. So you want the crutches to be on the side of the sore uh, leg or the surgical leg or the injured leg. And then you're going to push down into the crutch and you're going to have a seat. It's important that you're doing it this way versus a lot of times what I'll see is people will just have their crutches underneath their armpits and they'll kind of just, just sit down awkwardly. And obviously that's a falls risk. You want to make sure that the crutches are away from your armpits so they don't get tangled up when you are sitting down so that you don't run the risk. So there you have it. We went over crutch fitting. We went over walking with crutches. If you can put weight or not put weight with one crutch and with two crutches. We went over going up and down the stairs with one crutch, two crutches and putting weight on the leg. And then we also went over going up and down or getting up and down from a chair using the crutches. I hope you found this information valuable. Uh, it really helped me a lot when I was in physio school, just knowing all the reasoning behind why we do what we do and how to teach them so that other people know. Because if you've, never if, if you've never used crutches before, it's really important that you know this information in preparation for your upcoming surgery or after the surgery so you uh, know what to expect. But please, again, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you found this information valuable. And looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.